First of all, I want to thank you for the invitation. It is an honor for me to speak to scientists as an artist. I feel a bit like a court jester in former times. And thus I let you look into my gross thinking brain, looking for art-based research and practice-based science. That's because in the recent decades I came across lots of theories which did not work in reality. Even though many musicians spent thousands of hours being completely convinced by the methods developed by the most intelligent and well-meaning persons. And because it's all about sound, I very much regret not to be able to speak to you in a proper pronunciation. I really like the British way of doing conversation. But maybe I am unmusical and anyway grew up in Frankfurt in the 50s listening to AFN, the American radio station. So let's have a try with my 500 more or less English words. I would like to suggest that we start listening to some music. I selected a small piece by Schumann, scenes from childhood, from foreign countries and people. I think it fits particularly well in our time as we have to build bridges and learn to understand each other across national borders. Introduction Written words and written music are timeless and just take the space of the paper or disc where they have been put down and where you can find them. Those who can read texts and the fewer persons who are able to read music silently will have the inner experience of time going by. And the same words and the same musical notes will take different time depending on the reader and his or her imagination. They can just swallow sentences and musical phrases or get a feeling for the deeper meaning, thus changing timing and sound in their inner ear. And there are a lot of possibilities when starting to look through the keyhole of the texts of literature or music. Composers and writers press their large world of feelings into black signs on white paper or types on a screen. Make these signs sound again. Let them grab space and fill seconds minutes or even hours. It's the sound 
with its different components which makes the sense, which can change the meaning into many variations. Read these three words. Depending on this sound, these words transport diverse feelings. I love you. This first version may be more or less coming from the heart. I love you. This second version, in a way, confirming what is meant behind the words. I love you. This third version, a little bit chopped up, I would say. I love you. And obviously the fourth version completely different, ironically. And of course it's not only the sound that changes the meaning, but it's always somehow what I do with my face as well. Sound and space projection that we have to do. I want to start with a phenomenon which I came across in my teen and twenty years. Playing quite a lot of concerts which were live recorded, I again and again had a completely contrary feedback on the one hand from the audience and on the other hand from the sound engineer. Either the listeners in the hall were overwhelmed and the recording was boring, or the sound engineer was enthusiastic whereas the audience fell asleep. First I thought that the mixer had a problem when he did not understand my interpretation, or in the other case that the audience was not sensible enough for my great feelings. to my sound on a tape or on the way into the hall. Did I play too loud nearby when bringing my ideas into the hall? Or did I on the other hand play too soft for the hall when I got a lively result on the recording? Unfortunately our ears have grown firmly on the head Therefore, it is very difficult for the artist to control the acoustics where the microphones are, and even more difficult to judge the sound where the audience sits. In first experiments I played a short piece of music again and again. I parallelly made students walk throughout the hall finally coming onto the stage, walk around the instrument, last not least going into the hall again. All of them had the same experience. After about six meter distance from the instrument, the musical interpretation changed completely. It did not just become less loud, adding more and more reverb with the growing distance to the instrument? No, the overtones which make the difference in the hall are quite uncomfortable nearby. And 
By that, the dynamic seems to be without big difference near the instrument. The further you go into the hall, the more you get, for example, a singing melody, while the accompanying voices become less present. On the other hand, the sympathetic music nearby, with less overtones nearby, is leveled and becomes boring in the hall. We confirmed this phenomenon placing microphones all over the hall. And by the way, the change in impression takes some more meters for the microphone than it does for the human ears. We did experiments in our concert hall and we placed microphones all over the hall. Here you can see the plans of the hall and where we put the microphones and where we placed the students. To show the independency of these results, we went to different rooms and pianos. Sound and time. There is another aspect showing that sound and time depend on each other in a complex way. Doing experiments with a number of different smartphones and apps in comparison with a professional recorder, we had the impression of more or less accelerando or ritardando, depending on the sound due to the equipment and app. By that, the self-control for musicians is dependent on a more or less wrong feedback. And this is not the only lying aspect. Think, for example, of dynamic. same tempo but with different sound. Speaking about the right tempo for a piece of music always needs the question about the sound being used for interpreting.
invented a game in my childhood while practicing because I noticed that Accelerando and even more Ritardando are very hard to play continuously. So I started to train the impression of getting quicker and slower just by changing sound aspects without changing tempo, using a metronome as my time control. And what about breaks in music? Are they just a hole in time? Or isn't the rest between sound experiences an important part of the music? As we hardly ever will be in an anechoic chamber, we will hear our surrounding space even after the reverb of the music ended. And this won't happen without feeling for the pulse of time. Our heart will not stop beating. The beat of the music will guide us through the silence and cure our stressed souls. Visualization of sound. In order to come closer to an objective assessment about what we heard and felt, we analyzed our recordings with different Fourier programs, visualizing the sounds. We had a lot of insights. For example, the first thing we noticed was that we perceive dynamics differently from the microphone. We took some sound events that were displayed louder in the program as quieter and weaker and the other way around. Second, we recognized that in dynamic addition is only of limited informative value. Rather, the weighting within the partials is important. Even musicians with a lot of experience were amazed at how they learned to hear new aspects through visualization. The eye seems to be the more honest organ. It is not so easy to be deceived. An important aspect of the knowledge about the sound events is certainly also due to the freezing of current events in the visualization. However, the ear lives from the passage of time. And this is fleeting. It was also very interesting to see how the impression of the pulse and rhythm can be deceived by sound, articulation and dynamics. So we went from the timeless notation through the interpretation into space and time becoming timeless again through visualization. Synesthetia, sound, color. We have taken a similar approach in the Interdisciplinary Sound Research Center of Tongji University. These were synesthetic aspects in the combination of sound and color. However, we also give the students the opportunity to include associations with other senses. Which colors do you see listening to those most different sounds?
Although certainly only a few have this special talent, we could all stimulate all of them this type of combined perception. This possibility has long been used in films to combine sound and image. It is not always about increasing the effect. Rather, the two elements can be used differently, independently and even in opposite directions. We work and experiment with these findings in a series of six short films, four of which have now been completed. The overall theme of the film series is the sound of the pictures. The individual films are about cultural similarities and differences between China and Germany. Here you can see some scenes. To be or not to be, be and not being connect. Born in fire, porcelain and wood. Poetical mixture of staccato mixing legato and melting into lines and and and. and movement developing from second into third dimension. Producing sound. Last but not least, I want to speak about the sports medical aspects of sound generation by musicians. This is a topic that concerns me a lot because it cannot be that over 30% of all musicians experience massive problems and even inability to play in the course of their lives. Why is it so harmful to create sounds on musical instruments? Sometimes it might be because of wrong technique. But we also observe this problem with the best artists. Musicians could learn so much from the high-performance athletes. But many reject this sporty aspect in the fine art of making music. But the physical stress during instrumental playing is comparable to that of sports. On the contrary, 
there is even an extremely much higher strain in the field of fine motor skills. These have to deal with mass force accelerations that can quickly take them beyond their natural limits. There is also the wrong idea of the decoupled movement of a single finger while the rest of the hand remains without reaction. Rather, the movement of the individual finger needs a starting point that is achieved in a much more meaningful and lively way by a counter movement or a dynamic tension in the hand. simply a time extension that exaggerated when practicing. That's why it is important to find reasonable training plans that take into account the much shorter exposure time of fine motor skills. According to our measurements the creation of a warm singing melody means a force mass acceleration for the single finger between 19 and 39 Newton. Extremely strong chords, we measured knockbacks on the spine in the range between 390 and 490 Newton. Mussorgsky, pictures at an exhibition. Such extreme demands on the body must be initiated and followed up accordingly. Over the past decades we have therefore varied the warm-up and cool-down of competitive sports according to the needs of musicians. In view of the much faster overloading of fine motor skills but also with regard to the instrumentally necessary imbalances in the body, we have developed an in-between for musicians. However, that is based on empirical experience and requires much more professional feedback from sport medicine. I've got many questions. Why is a stretching movement more permeable than a flexion? I remember how I started to practice Mussorgsky, pictures at an exhibition. 
My teacher at that time asked me to pull each note. I was half dead after only one page, and this piece lasts for half an hour. So I experimented with stretching and became lucky. Automatically much longer condition for this technique and even more brilliant sound. tone by relaxing the striking muscle or rather by using the antagonist. The benefits of synergists for fine-tuning strength training have not yet reached the instrumental schools. My wishes to you underpin what has been found joint development of exercises and training plans for musicians in cooperation with you. Maybe we even can develop a common catalogue with which physical actions can I achieve which character and sound quality. Last not least, one big theme internationally at that moment, lifelong learning. And there are lots of elder people that can stay healthy much longer because fine motor skills, when you are training them properly and regularly, will gain new connections in the brains even in extremely old age. And that's, of course, a very good thing which we could work on. Well, I'm at the end. I'll speak quite a lot in this direction in my other storytelling on the piano. So if you are interested, please come and listen. Thank you for your attention.